You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence.com. I'm Mike, and this is a brand new ink from Franklin Kristoff. So thank you goes to Franklin Kristoff for uh, giving me this ink for a review. Thanks very much. This is a one ounce glass bottle, and it goes for $8.25 on their site. So very reasonable price, I think. These are nice little glass bottles. And this one is called Shop Denim Blues. It's meant to invoke the uh, sort of, I don't know, dusty denim-y color uh, that was sort of missing in their ink lineup. The Ink 20 from the Philly Pin Show this year, I think, was kind of in this color space, but somehow I don't think I got a bottle of that ink. I, maybe it sold out quickly. I, I don't know what happened, but uh, I didn't get that one. So I'm glad they made this one to sort of fill that hole. All right, let's take a look at this on my typical Rhodia paper here. This is Rhodia. 80 grams for a square meter paper. It's a little bit coated, uh, and you can see a whole bunch of different colors going on in this uh, in this little swatch right here. You've got some like very dark, almost greenish uh, color in here with just a hint of sheen. I think uh, some nice edge shading right up here. The nice blue denim-y stuff over on this area. Real dark denim up there in that corner. Very cool looking ink. And I had this in two different pens uh, with uh, pretty different nibs, so uh, I think that worked out pretty well. These lines right here are all done with this pen, which is a Franklin Kristoff Model 40 Panther. This is an older Panther. Uh, this is actually one of the prototype Panthers. I've had this for a long time. And uh, this has a medium sig in it, and that's what wrote all these lines. You can tell that they're much darker uh, than this bit and this bit, and you'll see some down below. But with this nib, uh, the flow is great. I haven't had any hard starts. I mean, I've only had this ink for a couple of days, but uh, it's, uh, it's actually a very nice blue out of this pen. Very dark kind of dusky. This pen is the Sailor 1911 Vega and Altair from Bungo Box Pens. Uh, and this is Audrey's pen. This has got a hard broad nib in it and it's got rodden on both ends. It's got like sort of ruthenium plating on the, 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 the cap band and on the clip. The nib is black. Uh, this is a gorgeous pen. And I think this nib is actually a little bit on the dry side. And so you get the, get this uh, sort of I don't know, even duskier character out of this uh, out of this nib. Now, I think this ink is a little bit maybe on the dry side of medium. It's not particularly dry. Uh, like, you're not going to write with this and be like, oh, this is scratchy. It's not like that. It's just like, uh, you know, if you don't have a, a, a nib that's open, it's going to be a little bit on the uh, the stingy side. I think this is a little bit stingy. It's not. I'm not loving it out of this sailor, but that's Audrey's pen. So, as I said here, I think that this uh, looks a little bit and feels a little bit better out of the Sig nib than it does out of the Sailor. You can see it's just kind of paler. Uh, my handwriting just doesn't look very good with this nib, uh, this pen either. I mean, it's not mine, so it's not super surprising. Uh, but I think it really shines well in this Sig nib. So I'd give it even a bigger nib than this. I probably should have gone with a double broad, but I'm already using that with another pen, another ink. So this is, uh, I think this is a really nice looking ink. Okay, let's look at it on the uh, 20 pound copy paper where I didn't really have any problems from this ink with either nib. Both of them worked out pretty well. I think that you get a little bit of feathering here and there from this one, uh, not too much. But again, this is 30 pound, uh, 20 pound, 30% recycled copy paper and it's not, this is like the crappiest stuff you'll find in your office. And there are only a few dots that bled through as opposed to like this Aurora Red, which came through when I used a very wet nib, not at all. Anyway, so this is bad paper, but you get a few dots here. And so that I actually think, I think uh, works pretty well. So cool, cool, cool. That's good. Uh, it's meant to be, I think, sort of a, a more professionally looking ink. These, uh, these sort of blue, black, dark blues, these denim blues sometimes. Uh, will look really well in an office. And so if you're having bad paper, that's a way to do it. Okay, so let's put some water on here and then we'll look at it on a couple of different papers and we'll look at it next to a bunch of different inks and we'll see where it fits in the blue spectrum. My blue, my section of blue inks in my color decks is, it's pretty, it's pretty big. It might be too big. <laughs> I need to, I need to have more sections for blue. Let's give this a little bit of a shake and a shimmy. I'm hoping this will have some water resistance because, uh, I mean, it's shop denim blues, uh, and you'll definitely have the blues if you are in the shop and you get water or something on your, uh, your written down stuff and it uh, all goes away. That will be, I would be, I would be sad. Blue. So, some might say no. All right. I'll show myself out. There we go. All right. Hey, that's pretty good. Let me make sure I got it all. Yeah. So you have some come up on the paper, but not a whole lot actually. And, uh, <laughs> This is all totally legible, so that's very cool. This has actually got some fair water resistance. I mean, a fair amount of it came up, but there's not really any smearing or anything, and uh, everything's still there, so cool, cool, cool. All right, let's look at the chromatography. 
which is right here. And why I sort of suspected this would have some kind of water resistance. This is actually, I think, this is prettier chromatography than I was expecting. You never know exactly what's going to be in a blue, but here you have very light blue up here. You've got sort of a, a dark blue in the middle. And then this down here is like a green. So I'm not sure what all is in this ink, but it's definitely got some green and some blue. And I think it came out really well. I mean, you do see some like a little bit of greenish stuff going on. This is... um. This is a little dipper Colo Dex or Colo Ring card that I got from Anna Reinert over at the Well Appointed Desk. You just I just dipped this in the bottle of ink, and so it's much lighter up here. And then down here, you get this like green stuff. So very cool, and actually kind of reminiscent of the chromatography when you get down, right down to it. Okay, so here it is in an ink journal. Uh, and I actually just wrote these today because I filled up this pen and I didn't write down what I had filled it with. So I'm glad I remembered which one I had it in. But you can see there's quite a bit of difference here between the uh, Vega and Altair hard broad from Sailor and the uh, medium sig here. So the medium sig is much darker uh, and a little bit a uh, little bit more green, I think, character coming through. Whereas this one actually looks more denim-y and this is more true to the name of the ink. So uh, this is one of those inks where the nib and the paper are going to be pretty important for how it looks. So this is an inky finger. Fingers, currently inked notebook with wheat straw paper, which is good paper if you can get your hands on it. That and like sugar cane, good stuff. Uh, and this is from the Vega and Altair, and you can definitely see the same kind of difference that you saw on the Tomoe River. Much darker from the medium sig, which has better flow uh, than this uh, than the Sailor, which is a little bit on the drier side. And so I think not not for me. I would go with this one. I, I like this. I like this better, and that's good because that's Audrey's pen, and that's mine. So it works out. Okay. All right, let's look at it next to a whole bunch of other inks. Here it is on the Colodex card where I think it uh, is real pretty. And you get definitely a lot of this sort of blue denim character and also a lot of the green and such over here. So uh, here it is next to Roaring Klingner's Sketch Ink Frida, which is definitely a lighter blue, but you get some of the same stuff over here as you do in the lighter shading areas of shop denim blues. But this one is a pigmented ink, and so it's going to behave a lot differently uh, than this one, but also going to be you know water fast likely. So check this one out. If you haven't checked these uh, Roaring Klingner's, they're pretty cool. Then I've got here Noodler's 54th Massachusetts, which is an ink that I used to really like, and I haven't used it in a really long time. Uh, I think that, uh, and this is slightly different paper too, like a slightly different color paper, but fairly close. So if you uh, used to use Nor Noodler's 54th Mass, but you're looking for something a little bit different, uh, I would say uh, Shop Denim Blues is a decent analog for the 54th Mass. Then here's one that I got from a friend of mine, and I have I kind of forgot that I have this sample, and I need to use it because I hear great things about about Athena's Eternal Blue, and uh, I get it. Look at that. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Let's pick it up. There we go. Yeah, real nice. But you get more of a green character, I think, out of uh, Denim Shop Blues than you do uh, Shop Denim Blues. Like, you want to transpose those words uh, than you do out of Eternal Blue, uh, but definitely worth checking out as well. Uh, here it is with Ackerman number 09. This is Lon Van Yu, Lon Van Yu Oost Indigo which I think is lighter again than this one, but you get some of the same colors in the edges. I don't really have anything that's identical to shop denim blues, which is cool. It's hard to find a unique blue ink, I think. And then this is uh, Birmingham Pin Company's Pittsburgh Bankers Ice Rink. P uh, Birmingham Pin Company has recently re-released a bunch of inks because they've been formulating them in-house as opposed to importing them. And uh, so I'm not sure what the new one's going to look like, but the old one does have the same kind of characters, although much less green than this one. This one definitely has that green component. And actually, until I started looking at it next to like just straight up blues, I didn't really pick up on the green that much. But now it's looking pretty pretty obvious. So this is uh, Jacques Corbin Blue Austral, uh, Blue Austral, uh, Blue Austral. I don't know how to say that word in, in French, uh, which has the same kind of greens in it. Uh, but the camera is definitely picking up more blues than it does uh, greens next to the shop denim green, shop denim blues. Uh, and then just to show a straight up blue next to it, bam. <laughs> so uh, sometimes with blue inks, like there's a reason that my stack of blue inks is like bigger than I can show in this camera shot. And that's because there is so much variation in colors of blues. And so I think this counts as a blue. This definitely is a blue. But when you put them next to each other, like, whoa, that's actually a green. It's not really. But once they're next to each other, it's hard to say. So let's look at the next at the other blue black in the Franklin Christoph line. And that is Franklin Christoph's Noir Bleu. And this is just a very different character. So 
blue blacks run generally in two ways. You either have just like a dark blue or you have blue blacks that lean green or you have blue blacks that lean sort of purpley. This one to me is definitely like a blue black that leans green and this one leans more purpley. There's not, I don't have one of the in-betweens uh, here to show, but uh, you can see once they're next to each other, uh, how far apart some of these inks actually get. But uh, Shop Gen and Blues just doesn't look like anything else I have, and that's really good. So uh, I'm excited to have a, an ink that's kind of like unique in my uh, my collection. So there you go. All right, thanks for watching the Shop Denim Blues review. Um, Go out to franklin christophcom to find yourself a bottle of this. And it goes for eight and a quarter for this uh, one ounce bottle, which is, I think, a darn good price. And uh, I will see you all in the next video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, tell a friend. Go to the Patreon. Go to my... Come on now. <laughs> go to my shop at inky-d.com. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.